Hey everybody, Scalcrafty here again, TGIF. Another week has come and gone. Boy, they are really flying by. And uh, first of all, I want to start off by saying uh, our challenge is being uh, met with a, uh, a lot of enthusiasm, which I'm really happy about. Uh, you know, there's a lot of woodworkers out there that have been just chomping at the bit to get uh, in front of the lathe or the table saw or whatever they do. Because uh, I, I, I'm kind of like an amateur woodworker, you know, I used to do some woodwork and make some things. And you know what's so funny about woodwork is we, uh, we're like squirrels. We stash away pieces of awesome wood like Purple Heart and, and uh, Paduke and Cocobolo and Walnut and things like that. And you stash it away saying just for the right project. But, you know, those projects, every time something comes up, you're like, nah, I'm going to save this. You know, well, I'm like a hoarder. I got wood all over the place that I don't want to use because it's like too nice to use for certain projects. And uh, this is a great excuse to pull out some of those heirloom quality pieces of wood and uh, and make a hammer. And let me tell you, uh, this is going to be some some high level entries here because I could see just from some of the woodwork is some of the guys I know uh, personally uh, you know then pull they're not uh, joking around this is just this is an excuse for them to get in the shop and to justify their three thousand dollar table saw and things like that so it's gonna be a lot of fun I'm really looking now forward you could to start it. sending the photos to me uh, at my email address uh, November 1st, I'll start accepting the photos for people that don't make a video. If you're going to make a video, try and keep it somewhat short because there's going to be a lot out there. And, uh, and this is going to be fun. So, uh, let's see. For today, I have a few things I have to do because, uh, things that just come my way. But I want to talk a little bit about, uh, one of the things that I did every year at this time we used to, uh, with the scouts was, uh, I, we had to talk about survival or, or you know, getting in the woods and, and what you would use in the woods. And I want to talk about that, and I brought some when stuff When we think down. of survival or camping and things like that, the first thing I had to teach the scouts was how to process firewood. And I used to have the uh, three uh, theory that I developed a long time ago. Um, it's changed over years, but uh, this is what I found to be the most efficient and uh, what I used to try and use for the scouts and for myself. And the first thing you're going to need is a saw because you have to take logs and, and get them into sections that you can process down. So uh, the saw that I prefer is a regular bow saw. And uh, the reason is because it's heavy duty, it's bulletproof, and this thing is made to last for a long time. Now, these folding saws are very nice. They're lightweight, um, but they're pull saws. It's based off of a Japanese type pull saw. Um, however, with the scouts, they would bend these up like, you know, you really got to be careful and, and be know what you're doing with these saws to, uh, especially with the boys, because like I said, they will, uh, they'll bend this up like a pretzel. So uh, personally, a little bit heavier, but I prefer the first thing you need is a saw. Oh, That's I know a lot one. of people are going to say, what about the axe? You know, the axe can uh, drop a lot of lumber and things like that. The energy re required to drop or to process lumber with an axe is just way too much. And and we use it for, for fun and recreation. But uh, I, this is not the first. I would not choose an axe when I go into the field. It's just something that personally, and I must own 50 of them, and I love the axe. But just not something that you would use, if, especially in a survival situation or, you know, for processing wood. So the axe has uh, fallen by the wayside Next over Next up, years. my favorite tool is a fixed blade knife. Now, depending on what type of camping, if you were doing lightweight camping or something, these mowers are fantastic. You know, you can't beat them. They're, they're uh, lightweight, super light, super strong, uh, hold a good edge. You know, obviously, we have our old military knives here and then... You know, some of the old ones that I like, but uh, a fixed blade knife, really, you can you can do a lot of work. But uh, I, as much as I like it, you know, this might be an iffy one, but this would be part of the three step system. This would be now finally two. a small pocket knife, one that stays on you at all times. You know, these are my favorite, these bucks, but uh, any small pocket knife, anyone, even with multi blades, a Swiss Army knife, anything, you got to keep these are the ones that stay really sharp in case you have to do anything that required, you know, even any kind of first aid or anything that required a really sharp knife. You keep these clean. 
you keep these sharp and these stay in your pocket at all times you don't use these for batoning wood and things like that this is meant as the this stays on you at all for me times. personally my favorite part of the three-part system is uh well we used to call it a fro and uh a fro doesn't look like this a fro is more looks like this and uh, what a fro does, it's made to split wood. And once you cut it up, we had the saw, so we cut them up into small sections. You would use the fro to spl uh, split it. But uh, instead of a fro, this is all like a, uh, a machete type, you would say. But you see how thick these are? Now, this is a perfect tool for splitting wood and also chopping branches. This, this replaces the axe. You do not need an axe when you have one of these. Uh, here's a uh, girl model and uh, you can see here the reason I'm, I'm talking about this today is because I have to take this edge off here now um, when they come from the factory they're a little bit sharp here and some people want it for uh, you know so they could scrape their uh, spark sticks and whatever but I don't like it I don't want anything sharp other than the blade when I go into the field because when you're in the field you know you have a, a tendency that you you know you get sloppy you're tired you're cold you're wet and you could cut yourself so you take away any of that edge that isn't supposed to be there by softening all these edges before you go into the field because you're going to be batoning this anyway so this is fantastic these two are uh, among my favorite you know obviously you could see again the thickness this one's a quarter of an inch this one's just a little bit thinner uh, you could see the thickness here you could see the type blade the type grind and uh, just a really fantastic for doing all kinds of chopping or anything these are what you to me this is what I prefer uh, uh, this is a part of my three step system we couldn't bring this with the scouts they couldn't have something like this because they would be having sword fights in the woods and whatnot. So, uh, but for anybody else, this is what you would want. Uh, try and pick one of these up. A heavy, thick blade. Something like this. It's a little heavy to carry. You wouldn't want it backpacking. But without a doubt, it's the best uh, processing uh, tool out there. For we're going to be working on today. This is the Gerber Golok. And uh, I've yet to use this. But I know for a fact this is just the way. I made one just like this years ago out of a leaf spring. And it was perfect, and I, I gave it away, and I regret it ever since. But the handle is, I like a thin, you know, some people complain that this handle's a little thin. I don't know why you think a thicker handle, a thinner handle is easier to grip than a thicker one. So uh, the handle is nice. You can always wrap this with uh, some kind of tennis tape or something, or, or uh, adhesive tape. And um, the only thing is the edge here is a little sharp. And again, if I'm going to use this for a draw knife or something like that, or if I'm going to press down, when it gets cold out, your skin gets brittle, I just don't want this sharp. So I'm going to use the, uh, uh, the belt sander here and take off the edge over here. And you can see here, this is the factory edge that comes with this. And this is more than sharp enough for, you know, for what you're going to do in the field. There's no way that you want these shaving sharp. You're just going to... You know make the edge uh that more vulnerable so let's take off the top here and smooth it off now here's a perfect example of why you don't want the platen on on a job like this because you see we want the belt to conform over the edge you know and look at that it just i was able to take off now it's nice and smooth on this one side and here it's still sharp but you can see here it didn't take off any metal so to speak but it just took off that that edge and made it nice and smooth that you can hand also go into the sheath nice and easy so that's the key we're going to do this on the other side now and and then uh okay we'll we're finished back. wiped it down with a little 336 uh crc but look at that you see how each each corner here is now softened and you know it's just beautiful you can grab it you can touch it you can hold it you can you know that makes no difference for whatsoever on the uh, functionality of the knife other than making it that much easier to handle so I, I i'll tell you i can't it seems like every tool i get now i have to modify it in some way or another just to make it a little bit more comfortable for me but so that's the uh the go lock the gerber go lock pretty nice uh, okay next shape. up a while back somebody commented they saw that laying over there by the lathe that they said what is that and i told them it's a a Rockwell jaw stand. Have you ever seen one of these before? Let me show okay, you. What here it is. it is on the bench. This is a Rockwell jaw stand. And what it was, uh, I have their jaw horse. It's a three-legged, uh, uh, it, they're well made. And this one here, it's, it's nice the way this tripod, you know, anytime you have to stand something on a tripod, it's much more steady. 
And this here is like an extra set of hands. And let me show you how it works. Yeah, obviously you have these three um, beam of uh, tubular steel bars that come out and lock in. And the way they lock in, once they're locked down, they really can't go anywhere. They can't slip. So it's a real nice design here. Uh, coming up towards the top here, you have the, uh, the top uh, adjustment that will adjust from zero to 90 and uh which is really good and let me show you what else it does now you can see when it's here that's in its lowest position here but um i'm going to raise it up a little bit so i'll raise the camera ahead of time but uh, to raise it up all you have to do is just loosen this knob down here like this and this uh this bar will come up to 41 inches so uh and then you could lock it in at any height you want so if you wanted an an outfeed table off of your bench you could do that and uh, let me show you the top here. That's real nice. Now the top here has these uh, like polyethylene half roller type uh, bushings on top of here. So they won't scrape the wood or scratch the wood. If you have a two by four coming across it, it'll slide across and not do any damage to it. Has a built in level here. So you can, you can level it for, uh, or, you know, whatever angle you need to get to, but you can level it the, the top. And you can also go to that 90 degree like this and clamp in a piece of wood or whatever you have to into the side here like this and clamp it and uh and by doing this you'll have a, a vertical surface which uh which is always nice if you have to anytime you need a vertical surface this has a uh, there you go it clamps in like this now you have a solid vertical two by four that you can uh you can even have it go down to the ground but this is a really handy little uh, one device. of the first things i did when i got that uh that jaw stand is i said you know that'd be a good little ta you know an, an, an accessory table so i took some scrap wood and you could see what i did on the bottom here i just uh I just made a, a little scrap using some scrap wood. I pieced it together, and now this will fit right into the uh, the jaws of the jaw stand like this. And then you could just give it a quick tighten up of here. And now I have a a solid uh, table that I could use as an accessory table. You know, when I'm working on a lathe or the mill or something like that, that uh, I can move around. And so it's it's it can be real versatile. You can you know. I uh, use this for a hundred different things and I really now, like as it. much as I like that little jaw stand over here Here's where it's parked <laughs> as much as I like it. I got to tell you I might have used it four times or five times already. So uh, Sometimes things have to be out in the open before you, uh, you actually use them Okay, next up I promised my friend Brian's going nuts because he's saying you know We haven't had a tool restoration in a while and I have a most beautiful pair of Croyd pliers that I think I've ever seen. Okay, next up, this is a pair I've had sitting on the to-do bench for many months. And you can see here, it's a pair of Kreuter. I believe it's an 1821 by six and a half. Um, you don't ever usually see these, especially in the, these were nickel plated. These were a higher end one. And um, look here, look at the handle embellishments here. It's got the uh, screwdriver and the prong at the bottom. I mean, this there's so much going on in these uh, pliers that you don't very stiff to open up. We'll fix that, and you can see here, uh, insides forged, forged steel. It says on both sides here, and uh, we'll clean all this up and we'll get stunned out. We have to be very careful because normally, as much as I like to take the edges down and make them comfortable for me, uh, this is not a pair you would do that with. This is a pair that we want to maintain. And these angles are very difficult to maintain. So we're going to do the post wire brush, see how much we get off here if we have to go any deeper. But we want to maintain all these, uh, just the whole look of the pliers. So let's get to that. Okay, here's our post wire brush evaluation and you can see the handles look how nice the handles came out right again you need that soft brush to get all in there the inside again it's still stiff we didn't lubricate it yet but we've got the inside all nice and uh come on there we go all nice and clean both sides here um here's the problem we're going to face and like i said everything came out good with the handles and i knew this would be a problem the staining now you see here, look real close. You see that? That's stain. That's from rust, ate into the metal. 
Now, you could polish it out and leave it like that, but that's not the way we do it here. You got to get that down below. Now, you might think it's taking a lot of metal off. It's not. To get below that staining, you're talking about, you know, a couple thousands of an inch. But the thing is to maintain all these angles to make sure you don't change any of them. That's, that's where it gets a challenge. That's why these are very challenging, the ones that are angular like that. So, um... We got to get this over here cleaned up. We went over, triple went over with all the brushes here because we can't touch any of this. Want to keep that awesome font there. That's a real old timey font and we want to keep that. So we're going to hit it and try and get the rest of that staining off. Okay, so here is what we have. That's the before. This is what it looks like after. You see the difference? Now that's what the semi-coarse belt. We're going to go even with a finer belt and then polish it out. But you see the difference there? That's getting rid of all that staining. You have to do it. Now you know my favorite part. Remember what these croydons look like before we started. And we are calling this project done. Look how nice these came out, huh? Uh, first of all, lettering is all kept there. You know, everything is the same. And uh, now this is all a mirror. You see that? That's a mirror finish. But with the lighting, it'll show up any little scratches that you might see from the belt. But it is a mirror finish. I mean, it doesn't get any shinier than that. And look at the handles here. Uh, just beautiful, huh? Inside and out, all done up. And just, uh, you don't see this model uh, too often. These Croyd is... Uh, these, I always like these because of not only the uh, the embellishment on the handles, but also the it has a punch, a screwdriver, and a uh, kind of a pull, an oil punch, and they are quite sharp, you know. And uh, so this is it. This is these uh, Kreuter 1821. Look at that old time font, huh? 1821, and these are the six and a half inch model. And I uh, hope you enjoyed these because. Uh, you don't see these around too much. I can't believe that was 17 minutes. But uh, anyway, thanks so much for tuning in. I hope you have a nice weekend. Take care now. Bye-bye.